Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop video today. Thank you to go out today, see the things came out, see the things on sale today. Today though, I know the one big release that comes out is a Ford versus Ferrari. And with that one, I know, uh, I believe Target has one that has like a um, exclusive gallery book in that one. And then uh, Best Buy has an exclusive steel book. I'm not sure though if Walmart has any exclusives of the film. Uh, also though, at the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video and as always too let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the dvds and blu-rays and 4ks that are reviewed you know what you guys thought of them if you guys have seen any of them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into target we go and I also want to let you guys know, though, uh, thanks so much for those of you who have been, you know, helping out the upcoming horror film Strix that I'm going to be acting in. Uh, they have, right now, though, there's only seven days left on the campaign for the film. So, like I said, thanks so much for all the guys who, you guys who have been supporting the project and everything. Also on there, though, there's still the perk on there to pre-order a uh, signed Blu-ray copy from me on there. So, if you guys are interested in that, I'll have a link below for that. I also want to let you guys know, too, a friend of mine, Brad Twig, is working on an anthology horror film right now where he has, like, I think there's six days left on the campaign campaign and I have you know um, worked on some of his films in the past where like I've shot scenes for them and you know I've sent him the files and stuff like that but um, the movie though is just about to hit its goal and if the film hits its goal on uh, Indiegogo he will be bringing me out to act in the movie so that'd be really cool so if you guys are interested though check out the link for Shriek Show below as well and on there too they have a whole bunch of different perks like pre-order the DVD pre-order the blu-ray a whole bunch of other things as well so definitely check out that link below for that one but like I was saying though, the big thing that came out today was a Ford versus Ferrari. And this one here, the Blu-ray edition, is a $24.99 for that one. And I will be talking about this one at the end of the video in the review portion, so definitely stay tuned for that one at the end. And then like I was saying, Target has the exclusive edition here, which has, you know, a different cover on it as well. And it's a 4K Ultra HD edition, and that one is a $34.99 for that one. And it has in here the limited edition uh, gallery book in this one. And like, as you can see too, it's like a much thicker edition here. But like I said, we'll be talking about this one at the end of this video but other than that though all the stuff here though was from the last couple weeks here don't see anything else different here and yeah you always right here is always stranger things here and then in the same spot uh, but other than that though let's see if there's anything else different here probably all the same stuff here yeah all the same things here as well though but we'll check over in the section as well to see if there's anything else different i kind of doubt there will be but we should, we'll see though yeah, but over there, though, in the actual section, the other stuff that I saw over there was they had a Swamp Thing, the complete series there for $19.99 on DVD. Uh, that one, though, there also is a Blu-ray edition of that. I didn't see that one in there. Also, though, they had some kind of a new, like, JoJo Sua thing, as well as um, the movie The Great War there, and that one was uh, $14.99 for that one. But other than that, though, that was the only different stuff I saw over there today. Into Walmart we go. And I also want to say a huge thank you for all you guys, though, who have gone and picked up uh, copies of the film Restricted Area, which me and Danny, you know, uh, Danny Sinnerstarker, are both acting in. Uh, like I said, I want to say a huge thank you for some, you know, you guys who sent me all the pictures of you guys picking it up on Instagram and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, thanks again, like I said, for all the support with that. Uh, we'll see, though, if this location has it in, though, because last uh, Tuesday they didn't have it in here. So we'll see if they actually put it out in this one, because if you remember, I had to go to like four or five locations to find one that had it out. But the movie, though, is also on, uh, you know, you guys can order it on Amazon and all the other places as well. But if you guys want it in store, though, you can get it in Walmart, though, in person. But in the day, like I was saying, though, the big thing that came out was Ford versus Ferrari. And the 4K of that one here is uh, $29.96. Then it's $22.96 for the Blu-ray. And then $19.96 for the DVD-only edition. And then uh, they have Swamp Thing here as well, the complete series. And they seem to only have the uh, DVD as well. And that one's on $19.99 for that one. This is actually really cool. I've only watched through a couple episodes of this one. But I really did like this one a lot. Uh, other than that, though, here in the front, the other things new I see here, I'm pretty sure the only thing I'm seeing new here in the front though is this one here uh, called um, Arctic Dogs and that one's a $17.96 for the Blu-ray and then a $14.96 for the DVD of that one and then um, let's see if there's anything different over here. I think this may have released today, the Takashi McKay's new film First Love. That one's a $14.96 for the Blu-ray and then a $12.96 for the DVD. Let's see though if there's anything else different over here seems to be all the same stuff there but we're heading to the section though and see and I did peek over here though and they I did see though the one thing I want to you know see if they changed it out 
and they do have restricted area in here. Like I said, it's so cool though to, to see this in here, and then my name's here on the front, Sean C. Phillips. Everyone always thinks I'm saying Chauncey, but it is Sean C. Phillips. But I, I should always just, and I always just say that C means cool dude now. That's I mean, people always ask that. But I do see some other stuff over here though. And this one, like I said, you guys can get this one in person here, or you know online and all that kind of stuff. But I do see one thing here. I think I'm gonna get this zombie movie, and I, I never, I didn't look at a trailer or anything, but it sounded kind of interesting called yeah, Inmate Zero, and that one's $12.96. I think, like I said, I'm going to get this one. Other than that, though, uh, this one released today, the movie starring Ron Perlman called uh, Hell on the Border. That one's a $14.96 for the Blu-ray, and then $12.96 for the DVD of that one. And then they had, like I said, this is the other thing they had in Target, this JoJo Sua thing, which is some kind of like JoJo Sua dream, the concert experience. And that one is um, $12.96 for that one here. Other than that, though, um, they have The Great War here, and that one is a $14.96 for that one. Let's see, though, anything else different here that I don't remember seeing uh, last week. Seems to be all the same stuff here. I don't see anything else different. Uh, other than that, though, over here, though, this is one of the things I didn't sh uh, see last week. I talked about this one in the, the review portion last week, though, uh, called Invasion Planet Earth. But this one here is on uh, $9.96 uh, for that one. Other than that, though, let's see if there's anything else different. All these other ones were, were uh, last, uh, you know, last Tuesday here. But it doesn't look like anything else different here. Let's see anything else different over here. Uh, TV wise it doesn't I don't see anything else different like I said the big TV thing today though was um, was a swamp thing the uh, complete series which like I said really was a pretty cool show but other than that though I don't see anything else different over here as well but like I said I think I'm gonna uh, pick up this in you know inmate zero one this one definitely looks pretty interesting though but when it comes to Walmart, though, this is one of those things that I have not looked in in so long. Like, I don't think I've looked in this $5 bin in, like, years. Because it's one of those things, after you do it, you always have to go and, like, you know, wash your hands and stuff. Because it's, like, think about the amount of people that are touching all this stuff. But, yeah, like, I haven't looked in this forever. But every time, I, I don't know if any of you guys are the same, but anytime I think of these $5 bins, like, I immediately think of, like, the early Walmart $5 bins, the things I remember seeing in there, like uh, Godzilla. Uh, what was the other, one of the other ones? Spice World. And surprisingly, one of the other Walmart $5 bin titles I remember seeing back in the day like crazy, and I don't know if any of you guys remember this as well, was Drop Dead Fred, which of course is out of print on DVD. Because that one's, it, there's a Blu-ray of that, like a region-free Blu-ray from the UK, but it's never gotten a Blu-ray in America though. So hopefully sometime, some point like Shot Factory or somebody releases edition of that in the US. But yeah, like, I don't know, let me know in the comments below, guys, what are some $5 bin movies that you guys remember seeing, like, all the time back in the day? Nowadays, they're kind of just, like, more random, but back in the day, they, they would have, like, 30 copies of Godzilla, and, like, I, I don't know, I just always remember Godzilla, that was one of those ones, the Matthew Broderick one that I always remember seeing. Yeah, but in there though, I ended up picking up that in uh, you know inmate zero one. This one definitely sounds like interesting. It's like a set like a prison, like doing weird experiments on like the prisoners and like they turn into zombies or something like that. Sounds relatively interesting though. It's one of those things too. I kind of like the cover. And, you know what I mean? So who knows? If you guys have seen this one though, let me in the comments below how this one was though. But like I said, that was the only thing I ended up picking up in there today though. Into fries we go. And this is one of those places, though, I could just go to now just to kind of see, like, how much, like, how little is left in here. Because um, one thing I was I had read and people were telling me with fries, though, is that I think it's all of them. I'm not 100% sure, though, but I believe most of them are not getting in any new stock and haven't for a long time. So it's just been kind of emptier. You know, things just get picked over more and more and more. It's sad, though, because I was looking back on some of my early, like, DVD Blu-ray Tuesday videos from, like, 2013 and 14, and, like, when you went in this place they would like like if like you know um, on Tuesday they would get in like everything it was kind of like a place like Tower Records or Virgin Records where like on new release Tuesday they would get like 90% of the new releases that came out so when I first was coming here when I first moved out here too in 2010 especially they had like everything and it's just really a shame to see because this was a really good place though to find that kind of stuff but we'll see how picked over it is now though 
And I remember too, when I first was in here, they had this like huge shark thing that was in there. It's like big shark down there on the bottom that they had to get rid of because it was like kind of like a big weird thing because the shark was like huge and they had no room to move around. But it's just so weird when you come in here because like, like I said, they ha from what I was t had read and stuff, they haven't gotten in any new product. So it's kind of like just interesting to come in here just to see like what's left. And now though, it, I do see like a, a tons of copies of, so they filled the spaces up here a little bit. So they look, look at this, this is really interesting. Like all these copies here at Mad Max Fury Road for $4.99. And then this kind of like, Red Bull, like like some kind of like sports film collection here. So I don't know where these came from because these were not here last time around. Because like look at this, look at how many copies of this red of this Red Bull like sports collection thing they have here. And then look at all this. These were like only a Target originally, and then they have like a whole ton of these Stranger Things in here. Like so, like, I guess they found these to fill the space. But that's really funny that they have these in here because these were Target exclusives. But as you see, like, they fill like an aisle, you know, it says like sci-fi fantasy, and they fill it with like a tripod. But they've kind of like squeezed everything all together in here. But you could back in the day though, they, they still have some of them left though, but you could get like um, all the Arrow video things in here. Like they have Hills Have Eyes here and like a whole bunch of different Arrow titles. So like I said, this was always a really good place for that stuff. But it's just interesting to come in here now and just sort of see, you know, how picked over it is and what's left and everything but they did sort of like I said squeeze it all together and stuff but they do have like a bunch of different horror things but let's see though and look this is like the adult section and they put some kind of like I don't even know what those are, like underpants. But right in here though, you can see like the, the indents on the floor of where things used to be. And like, look at this, look at this section over here. This was where it was like the electronics, like audio equipment and stuff. And look, it's like all totally gone. Like there's nothing down there at all. I don't know, it's just kind of interesting to see this, like what's left of it. It's kind of, like I said, it's really sad though, because this used to be like a great place. And this area though, is like furniture. And it's just like a bunch of like little chairs over there, like office chairs filling the space. And then these are some kind of gaming chair. I don't know, it's just, look, look at over there how empty this all is. And then like that, I don't know. It's just really, really weird to come in here and see. And like I said, you see all these things on the ground here, like where the things used to be and where the shelving units and everything were. But yeah, every time you come in here, it just gets more and more and more picked over. And this past weekend, the only one I saw in theaters was uh, Harley Quinn, uh, Birds of Prey. And originally, though, when it released on Thursday, it had a much longer title. And I think it was like um, Birds of Prey or The Amazing Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. And I know they ended up changing it and shortening the title to Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey. I think there was like, I, I knew too, it was a very long title. I think it's like one of the longest titles for a movie, except for like, I think one of the other ones that was really long like that was Don't Be a Menace in the South Side, Why Drinking drinking Your Juice. And I, I never remember the whole title, but I think that was probably, that might be the longest title ever. I don't know for sure. But, you know, when it comes to the movie though, I feel like some people, as it, like I said, it didn't do, uh, per, you know, as well as they were hoping at the box office. And I feel like some people were like up in the air about seeing it because of Suicide Squad, which I will admit, you know, was not a perfect movie or anything but the best part of Suicide Squad the best characters you know in the movie was Harley Quinn I thought you know and, I, and I, even when I was seeing that I was thinking man I would rather just be seeing like a full Harley Quinn movie and you know I'm glad that they did that and th this one though it's basically though about you know character of Harley Quinn played by Margot Robbie, and at the beginning of the movie they're talking about how she ended up breaking up with the Joker, and when, you know when when she was with the Joker, everyone in Gotham was uh, really afraid of the Joker because he was crazy and nuts, and they didn't want to like cross him or do anything to piss him off or anything like that. So Harley Quinn though she was able to kind of do whatever she wanted and kind of could like cause crime and mess around with people, and because of that you know because she was with, with the Joker, no one really could do anything, so they kind of just had to let it go. But as soon as they found Found out that she broke up with the Joker. It was basically people coming after her. You and McGregor's character who had like beef with her coming after her. And then it was like dealing with though, you know, like Rosa Perez's character who's a cop trying to come after, you know, uh, you know, Harley Quinn as well as Mary Elizabeth, Elizabeth Winsett's character. Like, I, all in all though, I really like the movie. Like I said, if you are if you didn't like Suicide Squad though, don't be like afraid of this one or afraid of seeing this one. It's not like that at all. And it's Suicide Squad 2. One of the downfalls I thought with it too was it was like really heavy on some like weird CGI and stuff like that. This one was not like that at all. This was like a really, really good story I thought in this one. Overall though, I, I really, really liked it. So if you guys, like I said, if you guys are up on the air with seeing it, I would definitely recommend you do. If you guys did get to check it out though, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of it or what you guys saw this past weekend if you guys got to check anything out into best buy we go
But in here though, in the front, uh, Ford versus Ferrari here is on $19.99 for that one, uh, for the DVD, $24.99 for the Blu-ray, and then $29.99 for the 4K, but they don't have any of the uh, steelbooks here in the front. I, f I feel like I've noticed, I think people come in here and like buy them all up, especially this location I've kind of noticed. Um, the one of the things that came out today though was Shutter Island, the uh, 4K Ultra HD Edition steelbook of that one, and that one's uh, $24.99 for that one. But we'll take a look though on the other side here to see if there's anything else different over here. But yeah, it seems like uh, the only other thing different I see here though is uh, Arctic Dogs and that one is uh, $17.99 for the Blu-ray DVD combo of that one. I do see a spot here for a Swamp Thing, uh, but they don't seem to have that out. I'm, or they sold out of it already, but it's $22.99. And I believe that's probably the, looks like that's probably the Blu-ray edition. Also though, uh, Great War here, that one's uh, $14.99 for the Blu-ray. Uh, Hell on the Border, that one is uh, $14.99 for the Blu-ray as well. And First Love, which came out today uh, the, like I said the Takashi McKay's new film that one's $14.99 but anyway though guys that's all for my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today like I always say if you guys enjoy these shopping videos definitely give this video a thumbs up also in the comments below though let me know you know what you guys picked up on DVD Blu-ray or 4k if you guys picked up anything today also be sure to as well to let me know what you guys thought of all the DVDs Blu-rays and 4k's that I reviewed at the end of this video what you guys thought of them if you guys have seen any of them also if you guys plan on picking any of them up and also be sure too to check out the uh, Indiegogo like I said there's like only a week left for Strix the horror film so I'm gonna be acting in uh, as well as the um, Indiegogo which has I think it's six days left currently for the uh, movie Shriek show and like I said if that movie hits its goal like a little bit over its goal uh, it will be flying me out to uh, act in that one uh, should be a pretty cool horror anthology film so definitely check that one out as well but anyway though guys like I always say like I said thanks again for watching subscribing very windy now stay tuned for the brand new reviews and the first one I got here is from Arrow Video and this is a really cool collection here this is the One Miss Call trilogy collection here on Blu-ray and I really love the look of the slip cover in this one it has a cool like um like a it's hard to explain the, the look of it almost like a like a VHS kind of like for freeze frame that's like freeze frame on like a VHS is like a copy of a copy of a copy or something like that it kind of has that kind of like a staticky kind of look to it which is really really cool and the one miss call is like I said this is the one miss call trilogy collection here on blu-ray they also made a remake of one miss call and I think it was in like 2008 or so it's one of those movies I only ever saw once and as I remember I remember thinking it was an okay film the original film though I totally forgot though it was directed by Takashi Maki you know who directed uh, Audition and uh, Ichi the Killer a whole bunch of really really cool stuff and this is basically though about people who are getting calls like it's like a cursed call that they're getting where it's like they're hearing like a warning from themselves in the future like screaming and dying and stuff like that and it's basically though like um the people that this is happening to it's like a thing that's spreading around it's kind of like you know in, a, in the style of like a film like the ring and it's like they're trying to figure out exactly how to stop this and stop death from coming to them but it's a, actually a really really cool uh, series of films here and also has in here reversible artwork here for the um you know for, so it has one miss call two you know one miss call one miss call two and one miss call three here and I'll show you guys though a look inside as well it's a two disc set here uh, the first disc has the first film on it and then disc two has part two and three on it there's also a booklet in here which has some um, you know pictures from the films you know production information all that kind of stuff in here but like I said a really really cool collection here also has a lot of different features on here so I'll let you know some of the features on the set here so on here it has a uh, feature wise it has um, a a brand new commentary track on here on One Miss Call by McKee uh, biographer Tim Mess. The making of One Miss Call, an hour long archival documentary on the film's production, archival interviews on One Miss Call. It has One Miss Call deleted scenes, One Miss, uh, One Miss Call 2 deleted scenes, One Miss Call 2 music video, the making of One Miss Call final, an hour long archival documentary on the film's production, behind the scenes. So lots and lots of features on this one here, but a really, really cool collection here. Like I said, one of you guys on this one was available from Arrow Video in the One Miss Call. Uh, Blu-ray trilogy here and the next one here is from Arrow Video as well and this is one I just want you guys to know is available and this is from the um, Arrow Academy line it's a movie here called um, Man In Here and this one here has um, on here uh, feature wise it has a um, 
archival documentary from 1970 talking about love and literature and the relationship between the page and screen. Uh, Woman in Dunes, a newly filmed video appreciation by film critic uh, Geoff Andrew. Image Gallery and also has in here a booklet which has some you know uh, some stuff about the film's production and all that kind of stuff as well. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one was available from the uh, Arrow Academy line here. And the next one here is from uh, Shout Factory Scream Factory line. And this is a movie that I have watched throughout the years so many times. I absolutely love this movie. Uh, you know, I, I really like the original film, but I feel like the the, the first film. But what what I loved about the the first film though mainly was Fred Gwynn. Like to me, Fred Gwynn was like what made the first film. But to me, like when it comes to watching the, the films between the two of them, I always watch the second one more. And this here is the, the brand new collector's edition here of Pet Cemetery 2, which stars Eddie Furlong. And like I said, this is one of those movies throughout the years I have watched this movie so many times. Absolutely love this movie. Like I said, I, I for some reason always like this one a little bit more than the first movie. The first one is a little bit more scary, but like the, the tone and everything. But something about this one to me, everything about this I really liked. And this is basically though about uh, Edward Furlong character and his father and you know um his mother recently you know his mother is a, a film actress in like some indie horror films and horror films and everything like that and there was a terrible accident on set and she ended up dying They're, like she got electrocuted because like she was standing in this puddle of water and like it got near the light and electrocuted her and because of this happened though Edward Furlong's character and his father ended up moving back to where the mother I think it was where she grew up and they moved back to this house out there to kind of try and get away from things and try and figure out exactly what they're going to do and everything and Right when he gets out there, Eddie Furlong's character meets this one kid out there that he becomes friends with, and this kid is like kind of bullied at school, and there's like these really bad bullies and stuff, and his father or stepfather, played by Clancy Brown, he's you know bullying him as well at home. He's like this terrible guy, and what ends up happening though is one night that his dog though, Eddie Furlong's friend's character's dog, like keeps barking, and he ends up shooting the dog, and the dog dies. And basically, though, the friend says, I need you to take go with me to help me bury my dog. And they go to the Indian burial ground and bury the dog. And the dog comes back to life. And it's basically, it becomes this whole big, terrible problem when this dog comes back to life it starts this downward spiral of problem after problem after problem and you know bringing people back like kind of what what goes on after that but like i said i absolutely love this movie i love the music in this movie it has a really great soundtrack i don't know i just i all around though this is a great movie on here though this has a brand new 4k scan of the original camera negative looks great here on blu-ray has a brand new Conte track on here with mary La mary La mary lambert director uh has a brand new interview on here with eddie furlong it has an interview with um um, I think it was an interview with Clancy Brown as well, I believe. Also has a theatrical trailer on this one as well. But one, like I said, definitely recommend you guys check this one out. Also has the uh, reversible artwork here for the original uh, poster image. But like I said, if you guys have never seen this one, definitely watch this one here. The next one here is from um, from Lion's Gate, and they sent over two of these cool promotional uh, glasses, you know, uh, sunglasses, to promote the movie, and it's for the movie here, uh, Midway, which is the uh, 4K Ultra HD edition, which includes the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital copy of the film. This is directed by, uh, this was directed by Roland Emmerich, this is a, it's, you know, a, also I want to say too, when it comes to 4K wise, you know, sometimes with 4K, you don't always see like a huge difference, but with this one though, to me, like you really, really can see 4K, like, you know, the, with this, cause it's a really big, you know, effects driven film, lots of digital effects, special effects and all that kind of stuff. And really, really like you can see the effects and like the, 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 the details and the colors of this movie. It's basically though, the, the story is about, you know, what happened with Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor and, you know, the, um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and then it was kind of like um, dealing with what happens after that, because it was there was like said to be this the, what was going to be the attack on Midway, and it was basically about the American soldiers, you know, um, trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do, and like kind of like planning of the whole thing, and it's kind of, that's kind of what it all, all it was was dealing with Pearl Harbor and like the aftermath of that, and it focuses on the characters. And you find out about them and their their live and everything and what they're going through and everything. And this one stars here. It's a really great cast. It has Ed Skeeran, uh, Patrick Wilson, uh, Luke uh, Evans, Aaron Eckhart, Nick Jonas, Mandy Moore, uh, Dennis Quaid, Woody Harrelson. So really, really great like ensemble character uh, you know cast in this film. But like I said, 4K wise though, this one if you guys are fans too of like war films and, and those kind of films, you know, was really well done. And like I said, this the 4K was so good on this one. So if guys have 4K capacities, highly recommend you guys pick up the 4K 
edition. On here, though, feature-wise, it has a comedy track on here with the director, has the making of Midway, it has a whole bunch of different featurettes on the making of the film, it has on here a theatrical trailer, but one here, like I said, this one here is called Midway. Uh, the next one here is from Lionsgate as well. This is a movie here called Clown Fear. And it's cool, too. Uh, on the front here, uh, Marv, uh, Barvlet, Mar Marv Blarv Larvlet. I always never, never can say his last name correct, but I've known him for years through conventions and stuff like that. And really cool to have him on the cover here. He's on the back as well. But this is basically, though, and he he's like plays one of the main clowns in this movie. This is basically, though, about this group of these really weird clowns and like bad clowns out in the middle of nowhere. And basically, though, these um, girls go to, like, um, it like kind of, like, falls apart. Like, this wedding falls apart. And then a bunch of these girls are, like, kind of going after the wedding falls apart because the the, the, um, the groom, he thinks his girlfriend is cheating because of this text that he gets. And he gets, like, flies off the edge and says, I can't marry you. So then her and her friends, you know, leave and go. And they kind of, they kind of just kind of go to get away from what had happened. And they end up coming across this, like, weird, like, clown motel out out in the middle of nowhere. It's essentially, though, them out there in the middle of nowhere dealing with these crazy clowns that are coming after them and they have, like, all these, like, kind of, like, what they're planning and stuff like that, like, these crazed, deranged clowns. It's actually a really, really fun movie here. It has a great cast in here as well. Uh, Randy Wayne's in here. Um, you know, um, Sarah French is in here. So a lot of indie horror people and stuff like that that I've known throughout the years as well in this one. So just definitely one, though, like I said, this is from Lionsgate as well, but this one here is called Clown Fear. The next one here is from, um, from uh, you know, uh, Fox here and Fox and Disney and this is the movie here, uh, Ford uh, v. Ferrari, which is one I was really interested in seeing. You know, this one is up for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. I'm filming this before the Academy Awards uh, Sunday morning, so I have not seen, you know, who won or anything like that yet. So that's why I'm not saying right now who won or anything like that in this. But this is the movie here, like I said, Ford v. Ferrari, or Ford versus Ferrari, which stars uh, Matt Damon and Christian Bale. And this is, you know... Um, based on the true story about how, um, you know, and this was like, was it 1960, like three or so? I think it was in the, like the early 60s. Ford really wanted to kind of change up their car and they wanted to have a, like a really fast car because like the, you know, Ferrari was like, you know, people really wanted faster cars at this time and there was all these kind of races going on and Ferrari would win and, and there would be all these kind of races going on and Ford really wanted to have a fast car and they wanted to have like, um, figure out how to design it and they wanted to also enter into this big race and try and win. So they end up recruiting uh, Christian Bale's character and Matt Damon. And Matt Damon's character was like... Um this race car driver, but he was having some like health problems, and, you know, with his heart and stuff like that. So he ended up kind of having to pass the torch. Essentially, he still worked on the cars, but um, you know, uh, Christian Bale's character came in, and he was the one who was like doing the races. But he's like a real like um, would had like terrible. His character had really bad anger problems, and if things didn't go well, he'd get angry really fast, and he'd like throw things at the car and break stuff and everything. But both of them end up getting recruited by four to try and design and and work on this car and then race this car for them to try and have them win this big race. It's actually a really, really well done character piece. A lot of people pop up in here. Great cast in here. On here, though, it has an eight-part making of documentary that goes to the production of the film. So lots of, you know, intricate features on here. Like I said, eight-part documentary all about the making of this one here. Like I said, this one here is Ford v. Ferrari here. And the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers. They sent out a free copy of this one to let you guys know this one is available. This is a horror comedy film here called Snatchers. This one, I absolutely love this movie. This is a really Really, really fun movie. This is basically though about right after summer break this one this girl goes back to school and she sees her boyfriend who is away in Mexico for summer break and she hadn't seen him in a really long time and when he gets back he's kind of acting a little weird and he kind of wants to break up and and all this kind of stuff but she kind of like is like noticing he's acting a little different she's like oh he's a little more interesting lately I feel like a little more interested in him and she ends up deciding to so show you know he will stay around that she decides to sleep with him that night very that that night for the very, very first time. But then, like, the very next day, she wakes up, and she finds herself nine months pregnant. So, like, after the very first time she was ever with anybody, and then, you know, she's with her boyfriend the very first time, wakes up, is nine months pregnant. And it's basically, she's like, what is going on? How in the world am I pregnant? And it's her and her one friend, and she's basically trying to figure out exactly how to, you know, what she's going to do, and, like, how is, like, this happened? And, like, without spoiling anything, you know, because you know what, the, you know, it says even says in the back, this is basically,
basically, though, with her pregnant with some sort of an alien type thing. Some kind of something or other. It's something very strange. The movie kind of has vibes of things like It's Alive, Basket Case, uh, The Faculty a little bit. It has like kind of all those kind of vibes mixed in one. Critters a little bit. And I, it's just a really, really fun movie. But basically, though, it deals with like the baby and then like there's like these creatures and it's like controlling people and all this kind of stuff. But it's just a really, really fun movie. On here, though, it has feature-wise, it has be behind the scenes look out at the film. It has on here a blooper reel as well as a commentary track on the on the film as well. The next ones here are all from um, Mill Creek, and there's some really, really cool releases here. The first ones here are all from the VHS uh, slipcovers line that they have, which is like the 80s style VHS slipcovers, and I have a lot of them behind me. They also did a line of um, 90s, uh, like ones that were like, I love the 90s slipcovers as well. But these ones are all from the VHS slipcovers line. And then on the side, too, this one doesn't have the look to it, but it, they have like, um, the way they're designed, it has like a label, like an old school VHS, and it has like an aged look. And on the side, it looks like a VHS. And then also too, like on all the covers, it has like the tape. So you see like the VHS tape on the side. But the ones here that they released that are the new ones is uh, a movie here which stars uh, Cindy Lauper and Jeff Goldblum called Vibes. And this movie, I had I had actually never heard of this movie before. Like this is one of those ones I never heard anything about this one. And this is basically though about um, Jeff Goldblum and Cindy Lauper's character, and they basically basically have like these psychic abilities and can kind of sense things and can predict things. And uh, Peter Falk's character, you know, who is best known for playing Columbo, he kind of comes to both of them because he's like trying to find his son that went missing because he was out in, in the jungle trying to get, like, I think it was in the jungle somewhere and he was trying to get something and he needs both of them to try and see if they can help him find where his son is and then there is the other one here in the line uh, the other two here is the movie with Richard Gere and Kim Basinger um, No Mercy like I said I really love the way these have these designs and have these, the VHS on the side like this as well as a uh, Hudson Hawk which stars uh, Bruce Willis the other one I was going to talk about though from this line was uh, One Miss Call and this one has on here like a sticker like horror uh, R rated uh, must be 18 to rent I don't know I really love the way these are designed and this one is um film that stars Carol Kane and um Charles, as well as Charles uh, Durning. It's basically though about Carol Kane's character, who's this babysitter, and she gets this like weird call uh, from somebody in the, you know, who is calling her, uh, you know, and it's like like stalking her and all sorts of problems. And they also made a sequel to this movie as well. I think it was like for Showtime that it was released a little a little while back, like um, when, when a stranger calls back or a stranger calls again, which I actually I only saw for the first time recently. I thought it was actually pretty cool. But like I said, I wanted to show you guys these brand new uh, VHS slipcovers lines. Also though. Uh, when, it, when it comes to Carol Kane, there's a show here that Carol Kane stars in as well. She's one of the main characters in, and this is a show, another one that I had, you know, I had heard the title, had never watched a single episode of my life, and then I started watching this and had watched through like a number of, a number of episodes of this one, and re it's a really fun show. And it's a show here called Unbreakable, uh, Kimmy Schmidt, the uh, complete series here. But this is a, a seriously, if you guys have never seen this show, this is an absolute must watch. It's available for the first time too in a you know complete series of Blu-ray collection here from Mill Creek and it has on here all um, 51 episodes of the show from all four seasons and it's basically though about uh, Kimmy Schmidt, the character of Kimmy Schmidt who was in this underground bunker and she was kind of um I think she was like taken down there when she was like 14 years old and it was like by this crazed religious guy and it was her and three other women who were like locked down there for 15 years and like they you know they were basically didn't know anything about the outside world they didn't know anything they're just locked underground and the very beginning of this of the show she ends up getting rescued and taken out of the bunker and the other four uh, other three girls though they decide to kind of stay around the same area but Kimmy Schmidt's character decides she's going to change everything up and live her life and she ends up moving to New York City and she ends up getting uh, moving in with her roommate, and the character is played by Titus, and his character is Titus called Titus in the show as well. He is amazing. Like he is so like his delivery, everything he says, he's like amazing. He was also in this one movie I watched recently, a number of months back, called like I Hate Kids, and he was really good in that as well. But he's been in a bunch of stuff. And Carol Kane plays the um, landlord, so she's always coming around. But it's basically about Kimmy Smith in the city with her roommate, and like the and they're always kind of trying to figure out how to get money and like deal with 
you know, she's like kind of a fish out of water because too, she's like been locked under a bunker for 15 years. So she doesn't know anything about like what's hip or current. And each episode is like, um, it's all about like Kimmy does this. So Kimmy goes on a date. Uh, you know, Kimmy uh, has a birthday. Kimmy's love triangle. Kimmy goes to court. Kimmy makes waffles. So they're all kind of like on a theme like that. I don't know. I, I really like the show, but here's a look though inside. It's complete first season here, the complete uh, second season, complete third season, as well as the complete fourth season here. But a really, really cool Cool collection and like I said if you guys have seen this show too let me know what you guys thought but it's one I would highly recommend you guys check out the next ones um, as well are from Mill Creek and this is uh, these are two uh, double uh, collections here the first one here has Wild Child as well as uh, Life Happens Life Happens stars Kristen Ritter uh, Kate Bosworth is in the film um, and but and then Wild Child stars um, Emma Roberts and Wild Child was basically though about Emma Roberts character and it's a movie from uh, 2008 and she ends up in the beginning of the movie she's kind of like this Hollywood girl who's like messing around and her father's kind of fed up with her because she likes just kind of doing re 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 reckless things and all kinds of things so she gets sent away to this boarding school in uh, in England and it's got a bunch of people in here too like um, for, like early on things for them like it has on here like uh, Juno Temple is in the movie um, I think it was one of her early movies uh, the one actress who played the teacher the Danny McBride's character like in uh, Vice Principals, she was in in Wild Child, and it was just basically about Emma Roberts' character getting to this pr private school and kind of like not really wanting to be there. And then her and the uh, and the girls there are kind of trying to help her figure out how to get kicked out of school. But it's one of those things where then they kind of become friends and all these kind of things. But it's actually it was a fun movie. Like I had never seen it before. And like I said, it also has in here Life Happens. The other double collection here is a movie which has a movie with Rose McGowan called Rosewood Lane as well as White Noise the Light, which was a sequel to White Noise, which came out in 2006. So this is another uh, double uh, feature Blu-ray as well. Also from um, uh, from Mill Creek is a movie here called The Warrant, which stars in here, uh, you know, Casper Van Deen's in the film, uh, Neil McDonald. You know, Neil McDonald was, um, I always think of him from Ravenous. I know I, that was like one of my favorite things he was in, but he's been in lots and lots of stuff throughout the years, like t tons and tons of movies. And this is basically, though, about like um, uh, these this father and son who, you know, the, and the father is the sheriff and his son who are after the Civil War are going and trying to track down this criminal. And it was basically someone that they knew in the past. So it's kind of a weird thing. And he's a member of this gang now causing all sorts of problems. But I got, you know, I got a pretty cool Western movie here. And this one has on here behind the scenes uh, cast and crew interviews on this one. And the next three ones here are all from MovieZing.com. And I have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. But this one here is also a Warner Archive release. This is a step-by-step, -step, the complete sixth season here on DVD. This is one of those shows, though, I, I you know, grew up watching as a kid. Always really, really loved this show. Of course, this was on during during, uh, you know, TGIF, which was, you know, Family Matters, Full House, Perfect Strangers, Step by Step. There's a number of other things as well on that, but those were the ones that I always thought of the most. But when it comes to, like, I've talked about this in the past, I feel like Step by Step, though, was one of the ones that didn't get like aired, you know, re-aired as much and later. Like things, of course, like Full House and Family Matters, which I feel like they, they to this day play all the time. I don't feel like Step by Step was played as often, but I always really liked it. And this, the show kind of had like the vibe of like Brady Bunch mixed with like Yours, Mine, and Ours, and that kind of thing. It was about you know, starred Susan Summers and Patrick Duffy. And in the first season, they end up getting married, and both of them have their own sets of kids. And they didn't tell their kids about their relationship or anything. It was something they kind of kept secret and kind of got married all of a sudden so then they all end up moving together and it's kind of like the awkwardness of these kids all living together and it deals with them you know in school and then there are problems in school and like all, all sorts of different things but it's a really really fun show I'm really really glad that you know that Warner Archive has been continuing to release the other seasons of this like I said I'm not sure how many more are left till all the seasons have been released the next one here is from the uh, Warner Archive collection as well and this is uh, the Tex Avery Screwball Classics Volume 1 collection here on Blu-ray I'll say uh, Warner Archive though did an absolutely amazing job like amazing job cleaning up these episodes they look so good like the picture quality is absolutely amazing on these and these are like um these are ones that I, I felt like I, I, I recognize a lot of these ones in the past. And I don't know if I saw them like as a kid on like Cartoon Network 
or like, I don't know, I can't, couldn't remember where, but I knew I had seen some of them in the past. And there were some of them that were like, like the, the dopey dog was like a real known one. It was like, I, don't, I always remember, I always remember that, that dog. That was the one I always remembered. But they're really like um, crazy, kind of like over the top, wacky, slapsticky kind of cartoons. On here though, it has a whole bunch of different ones like Red Riding Hood, Who Killed Me, and which was kind of like a different take on Red Riding Hood hood set like a skyscraper because they like the characters of red Hood were saying how they're so tired of red riding hood always being the same way and it had on here like um uh let's see some of, the, some of the other ones i'm trying to i'm trying to remember what some of the other episodes were there i, I think there was like a couple of the, the droopy droopy dog or you know episodes there was like i think there was two or three of those ones on here but there were really really good ones on here like really really well animated definitely too what like inspired like because like they, they were <clears throat> they were doing stuff in here too and they would do like um like extreme close-ups and they would do like bloodshot crazy eyes and crazy looks which is you know what Rin and Stimpy did as well as Spongebob did that you know which came later and they would do stuff too and every so often they put in like live action footage which is what Spongebob did a lot I don't know it's just a, it's a you know you can see the inspiration from these what they went on to inspire other animation like into, to, into the later years uh, the next one here is from the um, from MovieZing.com as well this is the last one from MovieZing this is also from Sony and this is the movie starring John John Lovett's High School High here, and this one has on here the theatrical trailer feature-wise. But this is a movie that I watched throughout the years so many times, and it was a takeoff, a parody of um, Dangerous Minds. Is what it was pretty much parodying because this came out a little bit after that, around the same time. And it's about um, John Lovett's character going to get. He's working at this uh, school. It's kind of the school where they have a lot of like the kids are messing around. They have a lot of like bad things happening and everything. And he's there trying to like teach the kids and like. Like, you know, deal with all these kind of things that are going on. And he has all sorts of wacky problems. And he's like, there's like bad stuff going on in the school that he's finding out about. And, and it's just kind of like, it's just, a, it's just a really, really funny, wacky, super over the top, goofy film. And I always like John Lovitz, like when he plays like the, the lead or the main character. Because he was also in um, Mom and Dad, Save the World. Save the World. So I always liked him in that as well. But like I said, I want to let you guys know this one was available, you know, as well here. The next one here is from Magnolia. And this is a documentary here called Scandalous, The Untold Story of the National Enquirer. This is an interesting... Um documentary because like throughout the years I've like looked at the I'm sure a lot of people look at National Enquirer and like have read like the articles or see them in the market and that kind of stuff and this is basically though telling the whole story about the Enquirer and kind of how it started out and I didn't even know like when it first started in the very beginning it was like about like um like uh, crime photos and like gore and crashes and all these kind of like bad things and stuff it was and that was kind of like how the Enquirer started and it was bef bef at that point it had like a million people that it would get out to but it didn't go in markets and stuff like that because no one wanted to see that kind of stuff in the market like gore magazines and stuff and then it how and how it you know when it switched over to being like crazy topics of like um you know celebrity stories and weird interesting people and all that kind of stuff and um you know like stuff with ufos and that kind of stuff that's when it you know went started getting to the markets and getting popular and everything and this is all talking to people who were writers on the magazine or writers on, on, the, on the inquirer as well as like talking to um about some of the big stories and kind of like how they would get the things and, and then kind of how certain things would be kind of like um kind of you know, not really lied about in some ways, but kind of like exaggerated to sort of sell copies. And it was all about talking about how they were always like, as soon as they would get the one big story, then they have to get another one and how they were paying people for stories. It was actually a really, really interesting uh, documentary here. The next one here, this one is from, uh, from P12 films. And this is the, um, uh, you know the educational bundle edition, which is you guys can if you want if, you know, for teachers and things like that. And, and this, but there's also available as a version that just has the main film on it, the Great Alaskan Race. But um, p1films.com/edu is where I believe you would find out about this particular edition for teachers and that kind of stuff. And this is the uh, three movie collection here. Like I said, the main version that you guys can get online and everything will just have the Great Alaskan Race. But this has two uh, mini documentaries, which has where, where the where why do they run and Lore of the North. 
forth. And this is the, you know, the true story of Togo and, or, and Balto, which was, you know, they made an animated film on Balto. But this is basically, though, about this uh, sled dog, you know, with with the, and, and this guy whose daughter is sick and there's like a sickness going on and they need to get medicine. But because it's like this horrific snowstorm, they can't get the boats in. They won't be able to get there in time. So it's about the, the journey of this man going to get this medicine for his daughter and to bring it back to the community on, with, this, with the sled dog. And it's like, it's just a really, really well made film here. On here, feature wise, though, this has the making of the Great Alaskan Race. It has on here a couple other featurettes on this one as well. The next one here is from, uh, this is from uh, Passion River. And it's a movie here that's produced by Steven Soddenberg called Perfect. This movie, though, this is one that's very, very hard to explain. It's kind, of, it's got like these extremely like trippy kind of visuals. I guess you would kind of relate this one to Beyond the Black Rainbow if you guys know that movie. It kind of has that sort of look. It's about this guy though going to this sort of like, um, sort of like a Serenity type thing, and it's like there's like sort of weird type of procedures going on there, and it's like weird type of people there. It kind of has vibes too of like Cure for Wellness and all those kind of things mixed together, mixed with, like I said, like Beyond the Black Rainbow with kind of like the look and the, and because it's really highly stylized and it's got like, um, it's like set in the future a little bit. So it's got like these super futuristic kind of looks and like the location that's shot and everything. It's actually a really, really interesting movie here. And like I said, this one here is called Perfect. The next one here is from uh, Cleopetra Entertainment. This one, you know, was released on uh, DVD a while back, but now has a Blu-ray release. So I'm really glad about because this is a really, really cool film here, which I really liked, which has a bunch of people in here, like has Odessa Adlon, it has Maya Hawk, and it has it's called um, uh, Lady World. And then, like I said, I talked about this one a while back when the um, the DVD came out. But really, really glad this one now has a Blu-ray. This is basically though, about a group of these girls who are all friends, and they're there in this um, house for this uh, birthday party. But something happens, like some kind of an earthquake or something, and they end up getting trapped in this house because like they get kind of buried in, they can't get out. It's kind of about like them all sort of like unraveling and kind of messing around and they're doing all this crazy stuff like with their makeup and like getting all like making themselves look crazy and the one saying that they saw some guy down there and are trying to scare people. It's kind of all about like um, unraveling and people kind of starting to kind of lose it and it's like is there somebody down there and is there a way they're going to get out of this place? What exactly is going on? But it, it was really, really well done. Really love like the, 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 it also has like interesting music music the way it's done and stuff but also really really well acted here like I said this one here is called uh, Lady World the next ones here are all from um, MVD and there's some really cool new releases here to let you guys know that are available um, and this one here is from the MVD Rewind collection this is the movie here uh, The Point which is a really well done animated movie which has music you know um, you know uh, you know narrated by Ringo Starr and songs written and sung by Her uh, Harry Nelson or uh, Harry Nielsen and this is a really like cool animation film and I remember I saw this one years back when my like tech ed teacher gave me a VHS copy of it to watch and I always remember though it didn't go well because like I remember he said to me before he gave it to me he's like now Sean make sure you, you're careful with the tape and I remember the second I put the tape in the VCR it like the, the, the film and it snapped and I always remember this and it's one of those things that always kind of haunts me and I and then I was like uh oh so then I had to figure out how to open up the tape and, and repair it and I did and then I watched it and it played fine but then I'm like uh oh if I rewind it what am I going to do so I, it, was, it was a real scary situation but I always remember it to this day but here though this is like I said the, in the, in the uh, rewind collection so in here though it has the um, collectible poster as well for the film so a really really cool uh, poster here and I'll show you I'll let you guys know too the features on here it has a lot of different features it has on here a brand new 2k restoration here from the original 60 millimeter um out film elements here it has a uh that old guy that wrote the point a uh, conversation with screenwriter norman lenzer uh it has on here though as well as some other different interviews on here uh, making of the point on here uh, original clayma claymation animated sequence on this one inspired the film so lots and lots of features on this one this one here is uh, ones i just want to let you guys know are available from mvd and this one is from the mvd uh, classics line this is called a uh, hudson river massacre here like i said this is from the mvd's uh, classic line here and as well as these are from um, mvd and vci uh, entertainment and this is um from the Cla mexican uh, classic cinema collection this is three different movies here this one one here is called um, 
I'm, I know I'm going to say these totally wrong, so I don't even think I'm going to try and say it right because I'm, I'm going to say it totally incorrect. But I'll put a links below for the, you know, the, you know, the titles and everything will be below, and I do not want to say them all wrong. It's, I, I know I'm going to totally screw them up. Yeah, I, I, I know I will, so I don't want to say it totally wrong. But this is from like the, um, like I said, the classic Mexican cinema collection here. And the next one I got here is from Wild Eye Releasing. And this is from the Wild Eye Raw and Extreme Collection. This is a movie here called Blood Soaked. And this is basically though about these two girls who just started dating and they end up like going out on this like on the on this road trip and they end up like um you know stopping their car and it's like these two crazy like sisters these girls that are living out in the woods and they're like attacking people and they're really crazy and everything and they basically go and like attack these girls and then they like tie them up in their in their basement of their house and it's kind of like um what ends up happening them trying to escape and the movie's really stylized because it ends up switching into black and white at one point and everything and this is like i said this is the unrated cut of the film because i believe this movie was released while i released this movie years back and i don't know if this is a different cut of the film or not not. But on here, though, it has a director's commentary track, has a cast commentary, live audience track from the Polygrind uh, Film Festival in 2013, cast introduction, trailers, original short film on here, this, this side of the nightmare. And then the last one here is from um, MVD, and it's a movie here called uh, Space Ninjas. And this is a really fun movie. It's basically, though, you know, set with these, uh, you know, kids at school for, who have detention. And it's got, like, um, it's basically, though, some kind of, like, an alien type thing has like gone and like taking over the school and then it's like them in there and they're trying to you know go and like fight off these alien type things they have like these crazy like weapons and stuff like that and it's just basically though this really really fun you know sci-fi comedy horror film with horror elements and stuff and it's just basically about these kids trapped in the school trying to save the day and take out these aliens and stuff but this is one I would definitely recommend you guys check out like I said this one here is called uh, Space Ninjas but anyway though guys that was all for the review portion of this video thanks again for watching subscribing and I'll see you guys later